Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Lost in Space Season 1 Episode 2, it's called Diamonds in the Sky, full spoilers for the episode as always. So, we left last last episode with the, the big, you know, exciting, the, the, the robot was on the ship killing people and the Doctor, Doctor Smith and, and the two come to learn is Dawn, uh, you know, went away in the ship and we actually see them having crash landed and we see, saw a lot of the ships go into the, the black hole which seems to actually more explain the fact that they're not even in the, the Milky Way anymore because we find out later on oh shit we're in a different galaxy uh, yeah we, oh that's that's interesting uh, e- even even John's like hey I don't think that, the Milky Way doesn't look like that does it no yeah it even not. even a cursory glance yeah you can, you can just go that, that that's that's not right I mean, I couldn't tell you what the Milky Way looked like, but I'm assuming that in training for travelling in space, he maybe got more of a glimpse of it than I Yeah, You imagine they at least yeah. did a basic overview for everyone. Yeah, so so we actually have the, the two plot lines going alongside here where we have Dr. Smith and, and Don sort of escape the wreck. It was, it was exciting, like, oh, the ship's falling apart scene. We have to try and get away, climb out, and, you know, get over seas yeah. and all the rest of it. One of the small touches I liked in that scene, actually, is when he's crawling up to her after he's got himself out, is the ship's obviously slanting over a cliff at this point. What I liked about it, and this is just a little visual touch, but I thought it added a lot to the just the, the feeling of the, the scene, is that there was a lot of dirt on the, the floor, and it was constantly kind of rolling down, all these like grains yeah. of dirt all going down. I just, I, thought, I just thought it was a nice visual. It just made it very yeah, clear. Because uh, you always see like, you know boxes sliding and stuff like that. I thought this was just a nice kind of like... A bit more subtle. Yeah, nice subtle kind of just visual kind of thing. Um, and it's called Diamonds in the Sky, of course, because there's a storm that happens later on. And they actually set up the, the, the diamond, the rough uh, gravel, because they're stepping up. Because it makes her wear the dead woman's shoes. Because, hey, those those shoes are just going to like be torn apart in this. Uh, yeah. So so we set up this thing. Uh, so, so we got diamond, diamond uh, you know, gravel. We got storms that come out of nowhere. We've got snow that ends abruptly, and then forest begins. So we're getting a sense of all the weird anomalies that this. Uh, yeah, but that's it. It feels like a very versatile planet. You know, you know, there's a thing where you know a lot of sci-fi is mm. each planet just has one climate. Star Wars. Star Wars is guilty of it, but it's not the only thing that's guilty of it. But it, you know, it is pretty guilty of it. Yeah, it's really guilty of it. it this it is, is the I'm sand not, planet. I'm, I'm not disputing that. This is but, the forest yeah. planet. This is the like, snow wait. planet. <laughs> yeah, yes, there is a lot of that. <laughs> but here, like I said, we've had forest. We got snow. Uh, you, in this one, they're kind of going through like the, the the wasteland sort of area. Yeah. Yeah, you, so, you get a sense of different terrain around, around yeah. which is nice. Yeah, it makes it feel a bit more, uh, a bit more real. Uh, so, so that is that's going through. Uh, I guess we'll tackle the, their their stuff first. Because all throughout this, he's constantly like saying, oh, maybe we should just leave her, maybe we should just leave the chicken. And he keeps sort of saying, you know what, no, I'll, I'll carry her. You know, because they find this other woman who's like, you know, ejected from another Jupiter ship. Yeah, he thinks she's dead at first. Yeah, and then she's, she sort of like coughs or whatever, but she's still passed out. And he's like, okay, well, the storm's coming. The, the wise choice, the logical choice is to leave what? her behind. But he's like, no, I can't. Like, here, hold my bag. And he, you know, starts carrying her. And the whole thing is that she's like hey i think you're a good person you, you like to pretend you're not and my whole time i'm like when are you going to stab him in the back because we've seen yeah. you be slimy already yeah, yeah i'm waiting for it and it was really obvious the moment that it sort of set it up my honestly my only complaint is that they felt the need to do a little flashback to show that oh when he when she's told him to go get the necklace later on she she took the flare gun i'm like we got it it's fine yeah i hate it when shows do this uh i i sometimes excuse it when they remind me of things in previous episodes, mm-hmm. when it's something that happened five minutes before, no. Yeah, I mean, to 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 be fair, it's not exactly that because when you talk about that, the examples that we've complained about in the past in other shows, it's literally what we saw before. Is, yeah. Whereas this actually had her like seeing the other side of it. It was like here's the setup shot of him leaving, and then it's like her side of it. So I'll give it some it, credit for that. I don't think we needed it though because it was very clear. It is, and yeah, that, that's what I don't like about it. It's it's the same, even though it's slightly better than the other one, it's the same problem of it feels like they don't trust the audience to keep up. And it's yeah. like, here you go, just in case you didn't get it. Yeah, I'm wondering, I guess this goes back to the whole, this, they still want this to work for, for families and not just adults. I get that, but I feel like that's insulting to kids as well. Nah, kids are awful. <laughs> they are, but I still think, you know, even when you're a kid watching stuff, you kind of pick up on the basic stuff like that. I mean... Sure, I did, but 
Most kids are idiots. <laughs> they're awful. They're not idiots. There's a difference. Most kids are idiots. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue too hard on this uh, one. Dear. Uh, do you know what I love this every so often I'll go on one of these little rants about something and it's just a bit and I just I wait for the comments actually thinking I'm, 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 I'm being hateful towards something that said you do hate kids well in a natural normal way sure yeah yeah I just want to make that clear but when, when I joke about wanting them to like, tell them to go play in the road I am I am mostly joking yeah mostly mostly so, so no, so the whole thing, of course, is that she took the flare gun, and when they see the little, uh, what, what do they call it, the chariot, uh, yes. when the, the Robinsons are going back to the ship, she, she's the one who's fired it, and it's a, it's a neat little moment, because you think he's going for the flare, and you see the flare go up, and then it's her, you know, she gets in, and they say, oh, is there anyone else with you, and you're like, oh, you know what she's going to say, she's going to be she's going to be a cow, she's going to say it, no, just me, and like, oh, yep. you're awful. Um, so that's obviously mostly setting up things for next, you know, episode going forward. I tell you what, though, I cannot wait until Dorn runs into them, and he gets to reveal this. Yeah, yeah. Because I think what they've done, and this is, this is going to be like an insult to uh, to to Parker Posey here, but I feel like she is perfectly cast in these Weasley roles because I've seen her do this taper role before, mm. where she's the awful person, and she kind of suits it. Some people are just good at it, aren't they? And I feel like I already can't wait for her to get her just desserts. And I know I'm probably going to have to wait like most of the season for this. And by the yeah, time she's barely ha- even done anything. Yeah. Yet. By the time it happens, it's going to be like, oh. And that's the other thing is like all all episodes, she's like, oh yeah, this necklace belonged to my brother. Like she make, makes a whole thing. Like, this means a lot to me. So he'll because he's good. He's a good person. So he'll he'll go after it at our request. But yeah. as, soon, as soon as the she meets the family and you know uh, Jenny or Jenny, sorry, Judy. No, no, Judy. Penny. I was mixing. I was. I was combining the two names. That's what was happening there. Penny is like, oh, this is my brother Will. And she's like, oh, I always wanted to have a brother. And he's like, oh, yeah. everything was a lie. Well, that, that was immediately. You know, when when he picks it up and gives it to her at mm. the start, I was like, and she goes, oh, I, I must have dropped it. I was like, did she drop it? Because I, I don't know if she had it on before or if oh, it yeah, was just a a I, I ass- laying around. I assumed she was just thieving it, but maybe she was thinking so far ahead. She was, I'm going to do this. I'm going to like deceive him with. This means something to me, so I can use it to manipulate them later. Oh yeah, I, I, she was definitely always doing that. But even yeah. as soon as he picked it up, I was like, I don't know if that is hers that she's actually dropped, or I don't think I don't think it is. I, I don't think so. Given that the brothers completely made up, I think the whole necklace is just oh, this but, is... Like, that was immediately I was questioning. I was like, was that yours? Did that just come off your, your round, like from around your neck in the crash? It's possible, or or is this something that's just fallen out of the well, ship? Also, just sort of neatly, you know, covering up the family photo album. With all, all the different people in it, and I'll just yeah, hide yeah. that, hide that under the dead body, so no one she, knows. She gets away though, because he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I ain't carrying that. You're not being sentimental. Mm, yeah. Uh, so I, I do like the little twist though that he's constantly trying to pretend that he's this like badass who doesn't care about anyone, but he's actually the human being, and she's the one who's pretending to care but yeah. isn't. Yeah, he is like a survivalist to a point where yeah, all right, they're dead. It's fine. I don't care. I'm taking the boots. Oh yeah, yeah, that's practical. I agree with it's that. Very, yeah, no, uh, he, he's doing the right thing there. Uh, but you know, like he, he's a, he, he can't help him, so he takes the chicken and he takes the other woman. Yeah, yeah. So no doubt they survived. I'm assuming he's basically the Matt LeBlanc character from the movie, just like uh, Parker Posey, uh, Doctor Smith. That was Gary Oldman's character in the movie, right. the villain. Uh, the, the setup as to how they, they're, they're with the family is completely different, but I'm, I'm just getting those vibes because. He's the guy who's not a part of the family who ends up helping them because he's got his own not set of knowledge, and then she's the right. the villainous, slimy one who's you know pretending to be likable but is actually up to no good and only out for herself, Fair every enough. way possible. So, uh, so that's cool. Um, and obviously, she sees the robot at the end, and she's she's had a glimpse of this before. Mm. Uh, like, oh dear, but she has to kind of like you know play nice and you know Will's oh this is friendly, don't worry. No, uh, no it's danger. not dangerous, is what he says. Yeah, um, but let's, let's roll back to the, the family stuff, uh, which I mostly liked a lot, actually. Uh, I, I, yeah. I thought it was, there was one moment that I thought was a little bit. Um, again, they went one step too far. I didn't need it to go that far with it, because um, I actually already got that that John was feeling a little bit jealous because the robot was being a better father to him than he was. I don't yeah. know if I needed the actual. He sees them playing catch. Yeah, that was a bit much, and, and then yeah. I don't know, like you've got Will actually saying. Yeah, I always missed him when he wasn't around, and now he's here. Yeah. 
I mean, all right, you get away with it just about because you're an annoying little kid, and annoying <laughs> little kids say this sort of shit. They have no filter. Yeah, no filler. Uh, of course, when the robot touches a part of his ship, it seems to be like whatever happened to him when he changed with Will, it seems to be because Will touched him in some way. Uh, it seems to be that he maybe, you know, changes who he is. Depending, maybe the coding in his ship that he's the the race that made him, you know, the race that built him also built this ship. Actually, built all this coding into the ship to influence him. Uh, and he goes like, you know, he goes all red. He's a bit ready, you know. Yeah, and obviously he gets the memories of what he was doing on the ship, and it seems like Will sees the memories yeah, well, as well. Yeah, Will sees them. It's like a telepathic link. Yeah. Uh, which maybe goes back to the whole idea that he, you know, what he touches, he kind of like get, gets information from it. Maybe he can pass it back. Yeah, I, I assume this is how he's supposed to communicate with the ship. You know, this is how he mm. communicates with the ship in general, is this, you know, this link. And then if it's there were supposed to be life beings on there with it, and it actually completely explains why he understands when Will asks him to do something and no one else, he doesn't understand anyone else. Because if he understood English, he would understand when, you know, the dad or the mom or the sister is telling him to do something, but he doesn't. But when Will says it, he just understands the intent of the question because he's, it's like a telepathic link. I kind of yeah. like that. That's a, that's, a, that's a really neat explanation. Because obviously before I was thinking, oh, he just trusts Will, he doesn't trust them yet. Yeah. Uh, which... Kind of worked. Yeah, it worked well enough. Yeah, but I actually kind of like this. This is a hard. No, this is a hard reason. Yeah, I wonder why. if if the others touch him, do yeah. they link up as well? Uh, Does it overwrite the link with Will in the sense that he seems to overwrite the link with the ship? Yeah, that's a good question. A good question. Uh, and I wonder if there's some sort of hopeful message there to be told that the the spirit of the child overwrites the 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 evil yeah. malicious spirit of the the ship from whoever built it. Yeah, it could be. So no, there's potential there. Uh, actually, the other thing that he does is he actually when he, he's just sort of standing early on, and he wakes up eventually, and just kind of like melts his way into the ice, and then like dries out the ship. Yeah. So, so the, the ship's still stuck in the ice, but the inside has been emptied. And obviously, like I, I like the little callbacks to the first episode, whether the playing cards are like just you know wet and stuck to the floor, and all these other little things. And they're back on the ship, and they're, they're prepping everything. They get a, a leg brace for for Maureen, the mother. And they have all this going, um, and I I do I do like that Judy is feeling a little bit of uh, PTSD from our from our yeah. deep dive. I, I, again, I, I could have done without the moment of the flashback to it. Okay, because I think it played you know, just immediately when uh, you know she's told to be cautious uh, and and you know, Penny comes in, it's like, hey, we gotta just do this now, and she's like, no, no, no we're being safe. And, and like I said, like last episode, she was the reckless one. She was yeah, willing to yeah. just jump in and go around. So immediately, it was like, oh. This has this has had an impact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's maybe the complaint we've had in this episode. More than, the only real complaint, I think. I mean, unless we get to something else, uh, maybe some product placement in a minute. But uh, is that maybe it just it, it it goes a little bit on the nose at times with the some of the things it's doing to make yeah, it really clear. Yeah, you know that, and it, it also with the, the the parents kind of their bickering. Can, it, it's a little much at points. Yeah. It did lead to some fun stuff though, because I did. actually I did like Penny going around like doing the chores and like you know Dad tells her stop, stop doing that, you need to do this instead. This is more important, you know, drain the pipe. And then the mum's like, no, you need to change the filters, and it goes back and forth. And it leads to a really great joke when she she comes to rescue them later on. They get in the car and they kind of make up because Maureen kind of admits like, okay, I was kind of wanting to because I actually laughed really hard earlier on when she said uh, the kids need to hear her speaking with one voice. Pause. And that voice is mine. Walk out the yeah. room. <laughs> I'm like, oh dear, he's in the doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, but later on, like, so they're bickering back and forth. She's kind of pissed that he's brought Will and so on. Um, and he's and because the moment that I got that he was jealous of of the robot was when she's like, oh, you can bring him. Will will be fine. Because she basically implies the robot's protecting him. He, he'll yeah. be fine. He's got this bodyguard now, and that makes him feel like, oh no, I'm meant to be the bodyguard for him. He's my son. Yeah. Uh, so I like that moment. That's that's where I, I got the the intent of that. But um, but the other fun moment is when they're back in the 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 chariot, and she kind of admits, look, hey, once once the storm hit and it was all these diamond rocks coming down. You're the one who's actually had training in crisis. You're the one who's actually been out there in dangerous situations. You know how to like pr proceed in that situation. I really should, you know, at the very least, D defer to you on those things. Yeah, yeah. Just, just respect the fact that you have a, an area of knowledge that I do not. 
it, it's when obviously you know she wants to go and explore the 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 crashed alien ship yeah and he's, and he's like, like no too late we, we can do it another yeah. time you know let, let's get home but of, like, but of course once the, the 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 rain comes down he's the one who's like okay put these on get undercover do all this uh, yeah. there's also a sweet moment with the robot as well where he puts his arm up on top of the yeah. the kid to to stop him from getting hit uh, so that's good. But when they get back in, and she admits all this stuff, I've been getting to this little joke for a long time now. But when she gets in, and she admits all this, and they just kind of smell each other, and there's that little joke at the end where he's he's like, "Okay, so you know, okay, we've reached that piece for today. What about tomorrow?" And she's like, oh, "We'll talk about that tomorrow." I'm like, "Okay, funny little gag." But then Penny's head just pops out from behind and goes, "So which one of you am I supposed to listen to?" <laughs> yeah, it was good payoff. Yeah, it's good. Penny's quickly becoming my favourite. Uh, between that, uh, the the general just kind of like shruggish attitude to their parents asking them to do things, and then just just when she was actually going out with the chariot, because they go to the chariot and there's a little joke where some assembly required that the, the the wheels aren't on it, so she has to get the wheels and the tires all sort of on it with the, the big robot arm, and she's doing all this, and of course Judy's like, hey, no, this is too dangerous. We should stay here. They can take care of themselves, and she's like, no, no, no I'm going to go and do this. Like I need to be here. But the, before this all kicks off, before she sees the storm. <laughs> she she at the end of the to do list she discovered a box of Oreo cookies, and yes. it's, see I'm in two minds about this because it is very product placement because it's like oh camera close up Oreo cookies and then they keep saying oh it's the only Oreo cookie and you know like it's very realistic. But it's, yeah, it's just the same thing though is if they picked like a generic brand or they made up their own brand, it'd be like I wouldn't get the attachment to it quite as much like. I, yeah. I don't really like Oreos personally, so to I me, I'm just it. like, eh, yeah. Whatever. I quite enjoy an Oreo, so I I, I understood the. I, I get the sentiment the though, feeling. and and like you say, I feel I feel like it has to be something that people recognise for them to be so invested in it, like to be like, yeah. oh look, it's Oreos, like oh this is exciting. But at the same time, it did. It was very like here's like a full close up of the Oreo cookies, and and what made me laugh is when she gets the chariot uh, running and she goes outside and she's not got a license. She's doing this kind of against everyone's will, well Judy's will. <laughs> uh, yeah. But you know she's out there. She gets to the edge of the and it's like you know this like steep rocky decline and. She's like, oh, screw this. And she tries, she tries to calm again, but the, the parents are out of range. She's like, no, mom, dad, come in. It's not happening. And she takes an Oreo cookie for, for courage. And she eats the Oreo cookie and she's like, put it into the computer. And the computer, you know, there's some advanced tech here. It's mapping out the terrain and it's... Okay, yeah, yeah, it's right. putting it into, you know, snow mode. Here's the path. We can do, we can do this. And and she's like, okay, okay, this ain't so bad. All right, okay. And she's eating the, eating the Oreo cookie as she was going. And on the one hand, I'm like, okay, this is super product placement because this is literally saying the Oreo cookie has given her the courage to be a hero. On the other hand, though, you could argue that this is a comfort from home that's you know that's comforting her so that yeah. she feels better about the danger she's about to go in. And I'm like, I like it, but it's also really like, Oreo cookies will save lives. <laughs> I, this is the thing. I think it gets away with it because it works in context. Okay. I mean, I'm not really complaining because I actually thought it was really funny. I actually was laughing as she was like just munching on a cookie. As she, she was like putting yeah, the things yeah. in and like saying things I, to I herself. I get that. Like, like I, say, I think it's not the worst product placement I've seen. Oh, sure. sure. And it, it's always kind of jarring, but at least here it works in context and it's kind of fun. Now, to be fair... They get this once. If they do this every episode, they'll put. Oh, I happen to bring a box. Uh, it's, a, it's a frozen Pizza Hut. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. They, they got their. They got an allow a weight allowance each, so you know they can all have something. Oh, you really think they're going to be whipping out other snack food that's branded? Because yeah, because Judy really questions it. So she's like, really, you wasted that much of your allowance on Oreos? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, nah, Mum did. Yeah, as a reward. She she assumed, oh, it's at the end of the list, so it's the reward for doing the whole Finishing list. Finishing list. There's, there's a good logic to that. She is. And to be fair, when her mother sees the box of Oreos at the end, she's like, oh, oh, you, you finished, you the, finished list. the list. She was yeah. just happy that she finished the list. She didn't care that she started eating them. Yeah. But hey, so no, uh, so as much as I'm kind of making fun of the product placement, I actually really get a kick out of the scene where she's eating the Oreo cookie for, for courage. Yeah. Um, and again... It felt just really realistic the way she's just kind of stuffing it in her mouth. It was, yeah. I feel like when people eat on TV, it's usually very separate from everything else. They don't usually act and eat at the same time. Yeah, like, that's it. it. It was like she's still, like, you know, dealing with the computer, looking out, and you know, trying to calm, but just you know, it, with one hand, just and here's some food. It was relatable, you know. I, you know, the better times I'm at my keyboard typing away and I'm like munching well, on something in one hand. She likes steak, and then she eats like this. I'm just saying, yeah, definitely the most relatable. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And uh, when she comes, comes back and she's like, hey, you're usually the one who's brave and goes out and does things like this, Judy. Uh, how, about, how about you become you again so I can go back to being me? Yeah, I want to go read my books. <laughs> With my cookies, though. I'm taking the cookies. Yeah, yeah, they're mine. They're my reward. I went out. And then they're upset that the mum's crushing them when she's hugging them. Because yeah. she's so proud. Uh, there. So, so no. Uh, all, all that stuff was fun. I, I enjoyed the, the storm. I enjoyed the sort of the... The countdown to the storm with with uh, with Penny like racing out there to get them. It was all very like survival disaster movie kind of stuff. But if you're into that kind of, I dig, dig that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I like that when it's when it's fun. Uh, and again, the score was very nineties, very bombastic. Lots of brass, lots of things yeah. you know going on as this is all happening. Um, and of course, and of course, it does this question. Obviously, we we sort of glossed over them seeing the the navigation map inside the, the alien ship because when he, when the robot touches the ship it turns it all on and they're looking at, oh that's how they figure out oh we're not in the Milky Way anymore and I'm like okay so they all did go through the black hole that's how they ended yeah. up somewhere else that they wouldn't have expected and I think it raises some questions because if we're saying okay he because obviously I was theorising last episode that maybe the, the previous form was based on our life form and I still think that, I mean, that may be true but clearly whoever built them like also built this ship and sent him out to, you know, go through the black hole. Go through the black hole, possibly, yeah, uh, and maybe. Well, I, well, I, you know, I say that that's not necessarily true, is it? It either came from this ga- it, I mean, it must have come from this galaxy, right? If it's got the map on it. Yeah, well, it depends how far they've travelled. That they could have travelled. That's true. They could have just been aware of it and yeah. you know mapped this as well. That's fair. Something if it was from within the Milky Way. Then it's come to them and it's just fallen through with them. But they, ha- but whoever built it, happened to yeah, already yeah. know about this galaxy. So, so it's probably it from this galaxy or another one, and it's also been through this one as well. Yeah, yeah. This feels like okay. It's from at least here, if not further. But it, it traveled actively, traveled through the black hole to get to them. I think it brings up some questions. What was its mission? Was it just to like kill everything? Was it to scout out? That this galaxy was it? To, yeah, you know, was that a mistake? You know, was that something gone wrong with it that maybe it wasn't supposed to be killing things, and it, you know, it's supposed to be maybe an ambassador. Was it supposed to go through the black hole? Yeah, it could, yeah, it could have been an accident as well. You know, could have been because you know black holes they, they, they do suck things in. <laughs> so they, they do do that. So you know, I mean, uh, possible. So there is some mystery there, um, and I, I I don't think like the movie, if I recall, really get into much of this. Uh, I, I seem to remember it being very vague on a lot of things. I feel like, though, with this being a TV show, and if it gets multiple seasons especially, this is something we'll probably get into a, a fair bit more. Especially in a, in a modern TV show. Yeah, if, it feels like it's just the mystery that will that'll be there, sort of sprinkled out throughout, and we'll, we'll get maybe not get to it right away. I feel like... It feels I, like a season two sort of thing. If, yeah, I feel like a lot of this season will be survival, everyone else learning you know that he he was on the ship killing people and of course will found out and will was scared at first but in any sort of test the robot and almost makes him walk off a cliff yeah because it listens to his every command yeah. like without fail like it will have it would have you know killed itself theoretically yeah so so he's like and again it's that idea that he he believes it can change you're not like that anymore he says that a couple of times you're not like that anymore are you you know he, yeah. he wants to believe that and he's not telling the rest about it which i'm sure they're all going to love when of course they find uh, out and of course, we've got you know Doctor Smith knows as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of weird that the most innocent in the ship and the the least innocent are have both yes. got the same secret. And well, not the same secret, but they've got part of the same secret. They do. Yeah. She, she has a lot more to go along with hers, <laughs> but yeah, she has the first hand experience. Yeah. Um, also, there's a dude in the credits. I'm just noticing with with no name attached to him. And so I'm assuming he's maybe in the robot suit because as a as a practical effect, a lot of the times there's a practical suit yeah. standing there. Uh, his name is Brian Steele, and I just think that's amazing. That's a great name for a robot actor. <laughs> I'm assuming that's him. He, he looks like a big dude from the picture, so I'm assuming he's uh, the, the bulky guy in the suit. I, I assume he's only allowed to act as robots. <laughs> robots, or maybe if he ever joins the DC Universe, they'll let him play uh, one of the Steele family. <laughs> Uh, Joe, I, ju- I just want to point out he's played a Terminator in the past, uh, a Predator. Really? Oh, that, 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 that. big monsters in suits are yeah. basically his thing. Yeah, some some big creatures in in Hellboy, Doom. That's his career. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, he, he's a suit dude. He's a suit dude. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, episode two, I still I still quite enjoyed. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we had, we had the nitpicks. It, it, it sometimes likes to 
over overdo its moments a little bit here or there. Um, you know, the, over explaining her pl- her de- deception, over explaining the, the the father jealousy. But I think that's something we're just going to have to accept going forward because I feel like that's just going to be consistent at this point. P- probably, uh, I, I will say I you know I mentioned last time I was a little bit concerned, but you know, no flashbacks this episode. No, no, they they did not feel they needed them. I still think we're going to get the rest of that story, but yeah. Uh, I, I I happen to see the Netflix description that the next episode has flashbacks for okay, cool. Doctor Smith. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that'll be a different set of flashbacks. Very lost, yeah. mate. <laughs> Very lost. It is, which is probably why the people who got those yeah. early reviews were making those comparisons. Um, but I expect to go back to those flashbacks with the family as well. I just, I'm sure we will. But it's nice that they're not forcing them into every episode because it's like, well, okay, well, we'll do the ones when we need to do them. But yeah, that's no the more. thing. It tells me that okay, they've got the story there. But they'll use them when they're thematically relevant, rather than just okay, this is the next part in the next episode. Yeah, because everything that happened in this one was still building off what we learned in the flashbacks last episode. Everything was about you know him being away, how the kids feel about this, how the wife feels about this, yeah. and you know everything was still working off that stuff. They don't need new flashbacks yet, but obviously we'll get to maybe episode four or five, and maybe they'll bring them back. Exactly. In. So oh, that's cool. Uh, and I still enjoy it though. I- I'm still liking the 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 light air of adventure about the whole thing. Yeah, I'm having fun with it, and if it keeps up the disaster movie tone, you know, just keep doing that. I'll probably have fun with that for t- for ten episodes. Yeah, probably, and uh, obviously, I maybe expect it'll swap out for some just outright like alien mysteries, robots, spaceships. I'm stuff sure we'll build to that. Yeah, but yeah, so cool. And um, we've got a villain we can hate, and I obviously Don's alive. Obviously, he's going to run to the rest at some point. Obviously, it's just a question of what does he do with the woman who's like yeah. you know half dead until then, and what they got That's up true. to. Yeah, I, I will say I do like just how hateable Doctor Smith is. Oh yeah, she's already like, deplorable. Like, like she's so nefarious. I think that's the word I want to use. That's a good word. Uh, I'm still standing by slimy. Very slimy. Slimy's good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but no. I just I, I already I'm, I'm enjoying hating her already. <laughs> oh, I hope she meets. I know it's again, it's not a violent show because it's you know family. You friendly. just want something real grisly, don't you? I really want the robot to like, like just like smash her head in with his, with his fist. Mm, mm, yeah, which reminds it. me, I actually really like these big light thing. When you know, he's like, look for the light when she's coming. Oh in the yeah, chariot. he's been a lighthouse. He's been a lighthouse, literally. Yeah. 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 But hey, uh, so that that is episode two of Lost in Space. Very very good. Still, uh, we're having fun anyway. So let us know what you thought of it in the comments below. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitter's at mail underscore fudge for channel updates. Uh, if you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You can do that over there. Of course, there are audio versions of this uh, on our podcast feed. Uh, there's a link to that in the description if you want to go check that out, if that was more a suitable avenue for your enjoyment of this. Um, but hey, that, that is that is, that is us. Uh, we will be back to recording these on Monday, so expect episode 3 sometime late Monday, early Tuesday, and then hopefully just about every day from there, give or take. The odd day skip. That tends to be the schedule when we're doing these Netflix shows depending on what everything else we have to record so uh we will see you then <laughs> hope you had fun hope you had fun with the show hope you had fun with us hope you have fun in life in general unless you're a child because you're awful and you deserve to be miserable thanks for watching listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla <laughs>